So you've got this very, very indistinct view of what's going on with fish it's, and sea products. You get very few references to seaweed um, eaten or being used in medicine, a couple on um, external applications, not much. Even though you're absolutely certain, or I am, that something was going on. I mean, you know there must have been something, because with all marine cultures there is, but very little has made it into the written record. So what happens then? Well, we don't know. At the end of uh, the classical period, you've got this sort of retrenchment, this kind of moving of the cultural center into, we could call it the continent, continental heart. And I like the map of Mundi. This isn't the only map of this period, and there are others that show water. But basically, what you've got is a completely terrestrial orientation. Your medical thinking is entirely terrestrial. Uh, the sea is pushed to the borders, and e it never figured largely, and now it figures even less. And is that what is going on? Only we'll know. I mean, and this is where, if you look at people like Barry Cunliffe uh, facing the ocean, so he's bringing um, a sort of of an Atlantic culture into play and he's saying all right this is one way of looking at it but you can look at it from a coastal view you can see the ocean as connecting people you can see the land is behind and it's here that you see um, still carried on a kind of a culture where you have seaweed shellfish very central to the diet central to health practices and just you know fundamentally a central part of everyday life. But it's taking place on the, the, the margins from this view, so you don't know. So what happens then with the sea? Well, um, bathing does come back, uh, therapeutic bathing um, at the end of the Middle Ages, and with it comes a little bit later the rise of the sea spa. But if you look through the spa literature and you look through Roy Porter's collection, you'll see just about every reference in that is to freshwater bathing. You don't get very much on the sea at all, even though it was going on. And it receives here, this is uh, King George III at Weymouth. This is uh, receiving the royal assent. Now these treatments were like freshwater treatments, but much more violent. They um, took place um, in the, the sea where you were dipped very violently three times a day. What would happen is you'd be there, you were exposed to the wave, you were plunged in, um, and then you were taken back to your lodgings and wrapped up in a hot towel and you waited until, you know, the next one and three a day for, um, it could go on for months, this treatment, and it was meant to be a shock and a tonic. Okay, so there's this, and at this stage, it's generally reckoned that the sea has turned into something positive. And you get some wonderful quotes about um, all the wonderful um, the properties of the sea, the salts, the seaweeds, the fish, are all sort of um, in this liquid, and the sea is therefore very good for you, and you take in all the good things through your pores. So already at this stage, it's not so much what you, it's not what you eat, um, so much as what you ingest through your pores and the difference between food and medicine is very difficult to draw a line between. Okay, now as time goes on, um, the sea uh, is no longer something you have to throw yourself into. This is the rise of the middle classes, the coming of the railway, People come and they sit by the seaside, and by this stage, the sea is, and coast are seen as a healthy place. Um, it isn't necessary to get in it. It's in the air. It's in the atmosphere. And this is very much, you know, sort of the historical background to the blue gym that Michael was talking about earlier, and the idea of people liking to live by the coast because it's healthy. And this is where it comes from. And you still see it today, this, um, this kind of cult of, of the, the healthy sea, without much involvement. This is um, a very recent um, rock pool um, publication for children put out by the Countryside Council of Wales, and it tells them how to identify endless species. But it doesn't tell them that it's good for health, and it, it doesn't tell them that you can cook and eat them. So it's entirely something to contemplate. And what I think of this as is wrong-headed in, in two languages, you know, without really incorporating the sea and marine products into kind of the map of medical food and, um, well, medical food. Right, so, anyway, back to the, um, 
back to the seaside. So after the Victorian heyday of the seaside holiday, um, it starts to go down, but then you get the, um, I suppose, the rise of, of leisure. And um, on places like this, um, the coast of Brittany, um, it's not so amenable. You haven't got all these wonderful sand beaches, but what you've got is a lot of this seaweed, which in any case, they've used there um, from, I'll say time immemorial, very difficult to say. But they gather this stuff and they use it for fertilizer because of the, um, the soil in Brittany is very poor. And um, your collecting rights on the beach, if you're a peasant, is one of the things you can hand down one of your very few possessions. So you have this and it's here that they, they come up with this new form of um, talisotherapy. So from the old sea cure, you now get this idea of health as something that is, is a leisure uh, panacea for all the ills of our society. And instead of the, um, you know, the muscular aches and pains and the bad lungs of the Victorian era, and that's how you'd go to the coast, now you have the great, you know, the great problem of our age, which is stress. So here you have it. And here the sea is, is reinvented now as something that will take away all your all of your worries. Now, this was um, developed by um, Breton, well, science, uh, scientists based in Brittany, into a whole series of seaweed treatments because that's what they had to hand and they were very good at it. And in the French system, um, Palisotherapy or any, you know, this sort of thing is a recognized part of um, what their medical system recognizes as, as a proper therapy. Not all, but some of it. So it gets support. And this is one of my favorite um, high temples of this. This is the, um, this is Le Terme Marin de Monte Carlo. And it, part of it, it, it is so fun. It's like the neighborhood swimming pool, the municipal swimming pool, but it's a community of billionaires. So, you know, everybody gets there. They, they come and they work out, they swim. There's a huge um, seawater swimming pool. They have some exercise machines that are right over the yacht harbor, so you can look at your yacht. And there's a private elevator up to this. Um, but what's really interesting is in this facility, you've got three floors. And on the bottom, you've got one of the really um, very, very um, terrifying medical um, thalassotherapy where you've got jets of seawater and you know these these old almost Germanic looking but state-of-the-art treatments and you've got various manipulations then in the middle you've got the uh, the swimming you've got the gym and you've got the sauna and you've got the steam room and that intermediate level of sea therapy and then up on the very top floor what you've got is Oh wait, sorry. Okay, what you've got is um, all these sea muds, seaweed masks, um, endless manipulations, the most wonderful treatments, all based on various forms of sea and marine products. So you've got this whole thing, and, and here you've got this idea of the santé, which is not like health as we would have it, but more wellness and beauty. And again, it's just very French and very un-English, but this has been elaborated in this way. But of course, not everybody can afford that. So this is where we next get to with the sea and its so-called healing properties commodified into things like bath crystals that we can all go home with and, you know, put in our baths and all will be pure. And, and this is all wonderful because what's happening here is the idea of purity being commodified means that we don't actually have to look at what's happening at the, to the sea itself which, as we know from Michael, is getting um, less and less pure, uh, which is very worrying, but anyway. For me, one of the, the great challenges in the, the South Wales situation, but also in this, is um, if people can generally think so positively about things like seaweed masks and how they can rejuvenate you and how they're good for everything. Why is it they'll do that but they won't have this? This is spirulina capsules. 